This is a video podcast from the Canadian Centre for Architecture. The following is the second of three parts of the CCA's Urgency event, held in June 2008 with Greg Lin and Yang Ho Chang. It is the second annual presentation of Urgency, after the 2007 event with Rem Kuhlhaus and Peter Eisenman. We just passed to the second part with um, Chang Yang O. Yang o. Uh, he is uh, uh, presenting us, uh, how, how can I say, the other side of the Pacific uh, vision. Uh, frankly, Yang O is, uh, always been, uh, moving, has always been moving between uh, China and the United States in different ways. He moved uh, to study in the United States, then uh, he was back at the, after eight years uh, of uh, jobless uh, uh, period in the United States, in which he did uh, very nice uh, uh, hand drawings, uh, which are very soon going to be presented uh, in China. He has went back to Peking universities, University and then back to MIT, and he has now a practice, a partner in a practice in, in China. Um, the, um, um, I think that it is very important to have this uh, um, double side uh, of, of the problem from people like uh, Yang O oh and Greg uh, who have been uh, moving around and working all over the world. So. Um, Yang O, thank you very much for being here, and uh, please w join me to welcome Yang O. Well, thank you, Mirko, very much for your introduction. Actually, I'm not going to talk about my double life. Uh, I'm going to talk about one, one of the two. Uh, the, the one uh, based in Beijing, my practice. As you heard, uh, Greg defined architecture. I like to try to define the notion of uh, urgency. So um, I, I did a bit of research. I think uh, this is a, a rather uh, a classical definition of uh, urgency, um, if, if you may. As you know, uh, SOS means save our ship. Uh, for, for Greg, it still makes sense since you, you love boats. For most of us, I think uh, perhaps this is better. Just save us. And then uh, it really should be uh, as US. And uh, however, for, for us, for architects, I think and then uh, it probably should be uh, these uh, three issues. So today, in fact, as architects, we are very much pressured to take on these issues, the social ones, the urban ones, and the one is very much related to climate change and to the environment. And, and what it's really trying to tell us, uh, I guess, is a kind of an architecture of relevance. Sometimes uh, 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 we uh, do not pursue enough so that uh, actually architecture and the world out there, the society, um, got uh, disconnected. Having said this very big, huge statement, I'd like to uh, show you how uh, my office has been trying to, uh, to uh, approach these issues, probably in our, uh, in the, within our limitations, for sure, but also in our own way. So there is a smaller agenda we set up to tackle some of these questions in a certain way. So uh, the first issue I'd like to present is uh, to, uh, to question if the notion of form making uh, is adequate. And then we question if uh, uh, you know, building as objects has been uh, a matter which is uh, probably overlay uh, uh, um, at this uh, point uh, entertained. 
And, and then, uh, uh, so if I may end, uh, Craig, was, uh, Greg was talking about uh, uh, everything old is, is kind of a new. Uh, this is something very old. You know, from the vernacular architecture all the way to Le Corbusier's uh, hospital in Venice and so on, the notion of mat building um, always has this connotation of being social prog programmatic and we, uh, uh, my office, uh, me personally, and have developed quite an, an interest. So I'd like to show you one example. And Ufida is a major software company in uh, Beijing. And this is uh, their uh, research and development center. And what we did is exactly that. So basically taking on the cues from how uh, computer programmers would work, and, and then developed this mat, this carpet, which it goes uh, uh, horizontally in a very extensive way. And here, as you can see, we also uh, developed all these uh, um, uh, logos, which it becomes a tool for us and the users, the end users, to really discuss uh, the architecture. So here uh, is uh, the project. Uh, it doesn't have uh, uh, an expressive figure from the outside, another uh, shot from the outside. And then once you're in there, it is about the integration of all, uh, first of all, all our different sizes and the uses of spaces and then textures and, 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 and the materials. So this notion of fabric or mat is, is fairly literally and in, in, in this case, uh, being the concept from architecture and to a landscape. So there's a number of views. Of course, the notion of a courtyard is something very much uh, 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 indigenous uh, in my hometown, Beijing. So you, you know, we developed uh, a whole series of outdoor spaces, the larger courtyards, as you can see here and then layers of courtyards. And then on the second and the third floors, and there's a whole sequence of a smaller spaces as well. Um, and then the tiny little courtyards on top of uh, uh, the roof. The entry. And then uh, uh, fabric, or, or in a way, they're like a vertical, these windows. like. Uh, courtyards on the vertical uh, surfaces. And, and then uh, we, uh, uh, as, uh, I hope this is okay, it's saying something in French. <laughs> I, all I know is bonjour, ça va, so I don't know what that means. Anyway, um, you know, I, not only uh, myself personally, Chinese architecture are very much exposed to uh, the international debates. So uh, I'm fully aware of the, uh, uh, the, the kind of interest shared by, by architects in Europe and America, uh, in this case, uh, in terms of uh, skin. Uh, but skin is being defined as something very thin, and uh, uh, is this uh, thin membrane almost on, outside of building. But in the northern kind of a climate of Beijing, we're doing this very thick skin, although as architects, we are, we are uh, very familiar with this notion of a thick skin uh, anyway. Uh, but here it's thick, but also it's uh, uh, transparent uh, at the same time. So uh, a, a, a short summary is that uh, I'm, you know, the mat building traditionally in terms of uh, the modernism, it is about integration of city and architecture. We are, we are in a way carry on, carrying on this tradition, but really like to see the necessity of design cities, especially, again, under the pressure, not only how people would use city and enjoy city, but also very much in terms of the needs to make cities more sustainable. So the next um, mini project, it, it is also about technology. And uh, uh, as you can see uh, here, I, I think we, uh, we have all watched uh, too many times uh, the movie, uh, uh, The Graduate. So there's one word, plastic, and 
I don't think Greg had plastics, the plural. It's a, <laughs> it's a evolution there, but I, I'm staying uh, with plastic. Plastic, uh, I, I don't really have to say much. You know, it is about uh, being uh, very much lightweight. You know, in light of this uh, really uh, uh, traumatic uh, uh, earthquake event and, and we had uh, in China recently, to be able to build uh, light uh, would be very important. And, and also, uh, you know, the recyclability and the notion of uh, consuming less energies in some other ways. We have not yet, uh, we actually did a tiny little building, I'm not gonna show it to you, it's our own outhouse for our office back in Beijing. But uh, I'd like to show you an installation which opened on the uh, 30th of May in uh, London at uh, Victoria and Albert Museum. So if you are going there in the summer uh, this year, you'll, you'll get to see it. it. This material is polyethylene. It's used to make a pavement, as you can see, for a parking lot, uh, for a, a driveway. The grass can, uh, can uh, grow through it. So actually in China, we call them uh, the uh, eco blocks. However, uh, what I was interested in is uh, the kind of a structural merit the material has. And, and also, I was very curious about this kind of a porous, uh, translucent quality, uh, uh, rather the formal aesthetic quality of it. So uh, we uh, developed a way to really take advantage of the structural strength and, and did a, a, a pavilion. By the way, this is our office in Beijing. And, and the, the, the structure next to it is left over from another exhibition we did uh, at Santa Pompidou. We, uh, we recycle them. Uh, actually, we have a carpenter, he does that. that he redesigns them. And then we were working with this system. Basically, we uh, develop a system that can make a very tall structure. There's ways, there's you know, the different ways to layer the material to make it a, a structurally uh, really strong. And then meanwhile, uh, and uh, we can adjust the level of uh, translucency. And because the, the material is typically green and uh, uh, we, we actually kept uh, just the original color, trying to imagine a way to, uh, to take advantage of that rather uh, and Yojo uh, color. And then uh, with uh, very red brick walls at uh, Victoria and the Albert Museum, it seems uh, that uh, it worked. It's a very kind of a Christmassy uh, color scheme, as you can see. And, the, uh, and then a little, uh, little peeping Tom. Uh, so that the some, somehow it becomes a labyrinth, although it's also uh, translucent, so people, especially kids, they love to run through uh, this uh, installation. So we uh, we participate in a number of uh, art uh, exhibitions, biennales every year, but really with this idea that we would uh, experiment some of the uh, uh, technologies or ideas which cannot be yet applied into the design or making of uh, buildings so that uh, uh, these exhibitions become uh, 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 really laboratories for uh, experiments. So I, I'll go through this quickly. And uh, here, of course, uh, uh, my interest is to see the opportunity to develop uh, uh, more, if not in you know, a truly industrialized architecture, rather than this uh, uh, handcrafted building without the craft. In China, that's pretty much uh, the case. And then, of course, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm interested in, in working towards a, a more environmentally responsive buildings as well. And then the second one, uh, so I'm sorry, the third issue I'd like to address is that seem, it seems that uh, today, especially from the Chinese perspective, there is uh, uh, the uh, emergence of uh, maybe not one, but, but uh, several rather distinct uh, uh, new uh, international styles. I, I see it as uh, uh, 
uh, really a problem to explore the conditions which uh, uh, actually varies from uh, places. And then maybe it is important to remember to, to sterilize uh, 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 a, a particular idea in a way as to really kill that idea. So what we like to think is to develop more site-specific, project-specific uh, strategies for design. And this is a house we did. And uh, it's meant to be a courier house, but in the city of Beijing, the courier house, it really is enclosed um, all the way around by building. But here out there in the mountains, uh, we uh, decided to make a courtyard with architecture and nature. The slope and the building would together make a courtyard. And then meanwhile, saving all the trees in the middle. That's how you approach the house. And then the material, again, in the city would be mostly brick. But here we uh, use all the uh, excavation from other houses as the building material. So it's a very localized uh, approach to the design, although, of course, it's still based on some uh, kind of a precedence uh, of uh, um, the past. The courtyards on the second level, the house is literally, it's a totally symmetrical plan, and you can occupy half of the house if you wish. The courtyard, the entryway, living room, and so on. So here, uh, uh, I think the idea is really architecture of negotiation. You negotiate with the site, uh, the client, uh, the budget, everything. And, and, then, uh, the, and then without a style, what do architects do consistently? I think, again, it is a matter of strategy. What you are looking at here uh, is uh, um, a way to take on a, a local material in Shanghai. It's a uh, um, ceiling clay brick, very thin, as you can see. But we use it in a different way. Instead of making a typical uh, surface uh, vaulted, but rather the, these are suspended. And then in this case, it's about somehow to uh, integrate the big open dining hall and all the private dining rooms. Uh, this is a typical Chinese restaurant. In uh, Northern America, usually you don't see these uh, um, uh, private dining rooms, uh, dining booths in a way. So on the upper level, within the uh, break ceiling are the uh, um, private dining rooms, and then you have a, a big uh, open dining hall underneath it. But together, uh, with this service, would marry them uh, uh, as uh, into a one piece of architecture. So it, they serve a very good uh, Cantonese, uh, uh, nouveau Cantonese cuisine. So if you are going to Shanghai, not for the sake of architecture, but want to have a good dinner, you can. Let me know, I'll, I'll tell you where it is. And, and so in a sense, it is about the restaurant, maybe it is about, about uh, a housing and so on. So architecture still is very much about how to provide a backdrop for everyday urban life. And um, this is the last statement I'd like to make. Uh, so I, we haven't heard uh, people uh, talk much about postmodernism, uh, not lately. This is a, just a, a totally a, a coincidence. I'll show you what it is. Look, it's this. <laughs> it is about uh, all these things. About 15 years ago, we would have used these words on a daily basis. I think that they are pretty relevant. I, I believe that's still the world we are living in, we are working in. So what do we do about it? And you know, that's the question. So here I'd like to show you our first attempt to go really POMO uh, in, in many ways, conceptually and, and also uh, probably uh, rather even visually. Um, what do you see as a working model? What happened w for this project was that so it's in a hill town, but the site was bulldozed flat before we won the competition. So what do we do? So conceptually, we thought maybe we could to uh, reconstruct the topography by having this building there. 
And then we were thinking, uh, because it's a big building uh, in, uh, in, in this hill town, may, maybe in a way it could itself become a, a small a hill town. So it's a very much uh, the kind of a, a, a you know, postmodernist uh, uh, kind of way of thinking, but I think it's appropriate, perhaps in this case. And that's a built project. It's for a university. It's a, a, a mixed-use building. And there's a museum uh, on your uh, right. And, and then classrooms in, in the high rise. And on top of the high rise, there are music practice rooms. And then on your left, there are uh, research facilities. So the whole building gives uh, a sense uh, uh, of the hill, although it's programs and spaces tucked uh, uh, underneath uh, you know, th these uh, um, uh, open spaces and so on. Here uh, you can see how the building is, is broken down that to the volume of the building, so it assumes uh, the quality of something more than uh, uh, just a building, some uh, uh, urban quality. And, and then the uh, uh, open spaces assumes also maybe some urban quality as well, so a corridor probably is more like a street and so on. So that's that. And then looking back onto the campus from the building, inside of the um, museum. So here uh, is where I like to end, and, and then I like to propose, uh, you know, this is uh, not different uh, at all from what uh, Greg was talking about, architecture of uh, convergence. It's this notion of a fusion. I like the word of fusion because I like food. So you go to a restaurant, you can actually have a fusion cuisine nowadays. And so I think that that's a very important idea because really it is not about these versus that as much as something, you know, these within that or vice versa. Um, okay, this is the last one and uh, uh, take it as a, a commercial. Again, it's in my office and uh, uh, our uh, web and needs to be really updated. But uh, at least you can see uh, our projects a couple of years ago. <laughs> Thank you very much. This was a video podcast from the Canadian Centre for Architecture. For more information about this and other CCA programs and events, please visit www.cca.qc.ca.